Good morning and what's up? Today we're going to give you a little bit of a breakdown on fletching jigs. What kind of fletching jigs are out there? What? How do I fletch a narrow, etc., etc. Um, we get some common uh, common questions, and these are our common sellers. So I figured maybe we'll just give you a video and see what uh, see if that helps you out a little bit. Um, first off, uh, I would like to preface by saying what jig we use the most um, in here, and it's for one very simple reason. We use the True Helical Arizona Fletching Jig. It is very simple. It is not adjustable. It is very basic, but it does one thing that no other one will do. It puts a ginormous helical on things, and I am a very, very large believer in helical. Um, I think it's very, very important on hunting configurations. So for that purpose, we use that one more than not. Uh, the next one that's really common is a Bitsenberger. It's that guy right there. Um, it's fully adjustable. You can do a three fletch, a four fletch. You can do an X-wing style, 75, 105 fletching. This will only do three fletch no matter what. Uh, and you can also get a couple different jigs with it. You can get a right helical jig a straight jig or a left helical jig depending on what you want to fletch with now i do get questions as to why you would want a right helical left helical etc uh, a couple of notes couple of things for why one um, if you're using a single bevel broadhead it's going to twist right or it's going to twist left based off of whether it was a right grind or a left grind most of them are right grind you want to make sure your fletching twists the same direction as your broadhead if you're using that broadhead if not, um, and, you want, and you're unsure of what you want, and you want to test it, uh, you do what's known as clocking an arrow. And so what you do with that is you take an arrow shaft like this, you draw a line on the top that lines up with your bowstring, and you shoot it out of your bow at like 10 feet into foam and see if it turns left or if it turns right. 90% of the time it turns left. So if you want the most efficient transfer of energy, you should have your arrow twist to the left, which would be a left helical which is way less common and you don't see nearly as much of it. But in any event, um, that's how you would determine left or right. Uh, straight is really common if you're using a, a whisker biscuit or a hostage or one of those rests that don't give you good fletching clearance. Uh, so you need to fletch straight or slightly offset through there because if you put a helical through a biscuit, it'll just rip the veins after like five, 10 shots. They'll just be ripping apart and falling off. So that doesn't work. So that's really, the, in my personal opinion, the only time I would ever use this. Um, some people will probably disagree with that, but, you know, this is my channel and it's about what I think. So I personally would never put this on. Even on my target bows, I still typically use helical. I just make sure there's clearance on the launcher. Um, but like I said, whisker biscuit, you're a straight clamp. Now, the yeah, third one and the most expensive one is the Last Chance Archery Vein Master Pro. It's a lot of big words and it's a pretty spiffy looking tool. Um, all the adjustability of this, other than changing it from three fletch to four fletch, comes in the package and it comes in a handy dandy case. Would you hand me that case for us? I'm sorry, I didn't have it down here. Um, it actually comes in a nice little spiffy little hard case, like so. Um, open up. Oh, I should probably mention. This is about a $50 jig, this is about a $90 jig, this is about a $300 jig. FYI, that's rough costs, has directions and all that with it. It's very nice, it's very well done, uh, but it is three times more than this one and six times more than this one. So this is for the ballers out there. Um, and how this jig works is it rotates just like your Bits and Burger does. You can change the depth that you're receiving the fletch on you can't move where the fletch goes on at but you can change where the back end of the arrow is to compensate for it and your arrow goes in here we're going to fletch an arrow with each one of these so i'll go over the actual loading and fletching process on those but um, this guy slides on like so Ooh, a little snug here and you can change the direction that this sits on with the little receiver in here and a pin that goes in here that i'm betting either Where's the pin? Oh, you just clamp it down now? Now there should be a pin in here. It's probably in the box. I didn't open it yet. Um, so let's pause for a second. Let me try to find that. So after a momentary pause to go open a few of these, uh, cause we just grabbed this out of the box. Uh, we had to open three of them and then found the part that I was looking for, this little metal indicator with an Allen wrench. Um, so if you purchased one of these from us and you're missing this, please let me know. Uh, we'll go through all of our stock and make sure that these all have them if they don't we'll get them from last chance but that little fella 
goes in your jig to indicate how much angle of twist you want. So you stick that in, loosen this guy up, push it to there, tighten it back down, and now you have a five degree right helical or left helical, depending on which way you want to put it. So this jig will do both and adjust both. Um, very easy to use. Uh, takes a little time, but it's very, very accurate, very consistent, can't complain about it. Um, but it doesn't put as much twist on it as this does. I think it puts a little more on than the Bitsenberger will. So if you want a fletching jig that does single fletch at a time, that's adjustable. Personally, I would pick this over the Bitsenberger, even though it's quite a bit more money but it is very precise, very consistent. Uh, the knock receiver in a Bitsenberger is a little loose. You can buy a Zenith adapter for it, which I want to say is around 40 or 45 bucks. Uh, and it'll take the slop out of the back of a Bitsenberger, but you'll have to pull your knock out every time you want to fletch an arrow and put your knock back in when you're done, which shaves plastic off your knock and makes your knock fit not quite as tight. So give and take with what you do. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and fletch an arrow with each one of these so you can see how they actually work. I'll start with uh, tried and true left helical, true helical jig. Super duper simple. Just open it up like that. So it comes like that. Push it and rotate. And then the jigs will open up like so. Then I like to drop my, uh, my fletchings down in the receiver. Um, not sure if you can see it in here, force if you want to come in tight, but down the bottom here, there's a knock receiver. I'm not sure if that'll focus in well enough to see it or not, but it's a separator that your arrow goes in. And when you go to put it in, you can kind of feel it. There it goes, popped right in there. Well, so you know, if you want to turn where your knock receiver lines up with, you can actually grab it and it click, 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 will turn. If you need your knock to report a certain direction based off of your bow. But um, before we get to that, you're going to want to use, these are stealth veins, so we're going to want to use primer. So this is a new primer pen. Whenever you use a new primer pen for the first time, turn it upside down and push the tip in to get it wet. You get a little of the goods and liquid in there. Wipe it on your veins. I like to put them in the knock jig first and then wipe it on. And once we found, once you use a primer pen, you can use just about any glue on these. If you don't use a primer pen, you're probably going to run into trouble. But if you use a primer pen, we've used all kinds of super glue and not had an issue. Um, but uh, AAE does make their own glue called Max Bond. This is just a, a Bob Smith Maxi Cure that we found works really well. Can I get that? Yeah, there we go. It's a new bottle. Bear with me here. Boop, boop, boop. I like to use the tip to wipe the glue around a little bit. You don't want a bunch of glue. You just want it to cover the surface and kind of like a thin little skim of a layer. And you can use your tip to do that a little bit. And there's a couple things to remember when using this jig so you don't screw up an arrow or two. When you're done getting glue on them, make sure you push all of them all the way down because they will slide around a little bit and that's your depth of your knock. And then when you close this, close it very carefully and make sure that the veins sat down decently, equally. You see how that's, there you go. So you're gonna wanna make sure those look relatively equal in there before you try to shove this on it. Now, if they don't look equal and you just shove this on it, a lot of times they'll get screwed up. Where's my, there we go, sorry. Push it down real firm. And then that forces those veins down really hard against that shaft. You let that sit for about a minute or so and open it up and that arrow is fletched. So while we're waiting on that one, we'll go ahead and start with the Bitsenberger. And since we did that one left, we'll do this one straight. So the Bitsenberger takes some time to set up, but the beauty of it is once you get it set up, if you're not changing arrows or changing fletching or anything like that, you pretty much don't ever have to touch it again. Um, so we're going to turn that in just a little because I like my receiver to click a little bit more. That's good. So these screws back here are how you change three fletch, four fletch, 75, 105. So if you screw that screw in, it'll click three times as it goes around, or technically I think it's one, two, three, four, uh, to get back to the reserve. 90 will give you a four fletch where they're equally apart. And 75, 105 will give you what I like to call an X-wing for you Star Wars nuts. It kind of looks a little like this 
instead of like this. So it's more like that. Um, haven't seen anybody fletch that way in a long time, but back in the day, that was actually pretty popular when they were using this jig. But in any event, we're going to take our arrow, drop it into the receiver. And you can, once again, can you get shot down in there? There's a knock receiver in there that the arrow will sit down in. And what I mean by the Zenith receiver, you can move this around a little bit. It's still pretty steep, but when you go to push on it, because you're applying pressure from one direction, it tends to want to slide a little bit so you can get a little variance in the back end. So to set your jig, put your, determine where you want the back of your arrow to be or your fletch to be in relation to your arrow. Then I would encourage you, this is a, a new one, so I'm not going to mark it, but I would encourage you to take like a black Sharpie and mark where you want the back of your arrows to be so it's always the same and it's always consistent. And then just take that dry without doing anything, no prep, no nothing, and just set it on there and look at it. Now it's kind of tricky, but if I push on this and look at it, it's not sitting level on the arrow. It's like sliding off to the right a little bit. So then I would take these little adjusting tools and loosen them up. A quarter turn, a half a turn, and I try to look down the jig with a straight, it's pretty easy, and line up the fletching jig with the middle of your arrow shaft. Um, you can use any kind of diameter of arrow in this jig. It will accept small arrows, big arrows, etc. Same as that. This is for carbon arrows only, so you can't use a big fat arrow in there. It won't close. Um, they make ones for bigger arrows, but they don't have that much helical on them. So line up your top one, kind of look down the opening in your fletching jig and make sure it's kind of in the middle of the arrow. And now when you go back and look on this and go to push on it, it should push down relatively even. Looks like I need to go on the back just a little bit more. Okay. All right, that looks pretty even. So I'm looking at it. I feel like it looks pretty good, pretty happy with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and once again, primer pen my vein and some might ask that know AAE stuff pretty well is why are you using stealths instead of uh, hybrids hybrids don't require the use of a primer pen well hybrids are heavier it's the same shape vein same profile of vein but you're getting a grain more at least on your arrow on the back end that equals three on the back that takes away from your FOC so it's a little more work to put these up but they also, in my opinion, are a little more durable. The hybrid vein's softer, so it's gonna be easier to shoot holes through. So if that's why we're using this vein. Little bit of glue on the back end again. Now, if I'm doing a bunch of arrows, I'll typically have like a Q-tip or something and I'll wipe it around with a Q-tip or different applicator instead of the tip of that. But in any event, push that down. Let that sit for about a minute. You probably get away with 15, 20 seconds on there, but either way, that's what we're gonna do. All right, fletching jig number three, Vein Master Pro. Take the fletching jig portion off, and since we did a straight and we did a left, we can set this, this is already set right, so we're just gonna leave it right. It's a little snug to get it off but snug means consistent. So you set it in the receiver that rotates, put this guy over the tip, and then there's a button here that you can push to lengthen this out to get it to where it's close to the end. But the purpose of this is to create some tension to hold the arrow in place. So it pushes it back on the receiver. That's what that's for. So with about, you want about four inches to six inches probably. That glue spilled out all over my hand. Oh well. So that's pretty much how you set it. So we're going to put a single one in here. And there's these little black and red lines on the clear. And you kind of want to line it up with that consistently every time you see them back there. So we're going to do a little dry fit here. Just like the Bits and Burger, you're going to want to put it on first. And then rotate your wires. So we're trying to put maximum helical because I'm a big fan of that. Let's see what we can do here and rotate that where it lines up with the arrow there. So we can push on it. And then rotate that guy. Take a look at it. There we go. So it pushes firmly. 
That looks about right. Let's get back a little bit. There you go. Mm -hmm. All right. Looks like about as much as I can do and still get a good stick. That looked pretty good. All right. No glue on there and it still sticks. Look at that. All right. So a little primer pan. Back up. Little glue. Spreaded around good. And here we go. Push that on there to where it's touching firmly. Make sure it's all the way in there and staying in the receiver. It's good there. Mm -hmm. Looks good. All right, we'll leave that one alone. Go back to this guy, which this has probably been done for like five minutes. Rotate it back out. You see that? Push forward and rotate to the right. Take the lid off. Ooh. And pull a fletch and jig open. And when you leave it in there too long, you get white residue like that before you get the opportunity to wipe the excess glue off. If you get a Q-tip, which we didn't grab, but if you just go with a Q-tip, clean it off, you've got all three veins on with a good, really extreme helical, which is what I like and I really think makes the biggest difference in broadhead stability on a left helical. You can do the same thing with a right. So this arrow's done. Here's our straight fletch bits and burger. Open the clamp, pull it out. Pull it out of the receiver and straight fletched on there real good. So when you went to do a second arrow, you rotate it to the left, grab another vein. We'll go ahead and fletch these up. Take note how long it took you to fletch that one versus these ones. These take a lot longer, but they're a more precise tool with more adjustability. So there's some give and take there. So we're gonna go, now that I'm not explaining what we're doing, I'll just put these last two on real quick on each little glue. Spread it down, Pull that in, push it on, give it a good push while holding the arrow so the arrow doesn't move. You're all good there. So that should come off. You should be able to rotate it again. Another fletch in there. Mm -hmm. Primer pen. Mm -hmm. Little glue. Slide it on. Push it in. Hold the arrow in while you do it. Give it a good push. All right, back to here. We'll chink. So we do actually sell all everything you're seeing on the table here. We sell the fletching jigs, we sell the veins, we sell glue, we sell primer pens, even Allen wrenches. Uh, we'll put links in the uh, in the video here for the fletching jigs. So if you decide which one you want, you should be able to click on it, take you right to the website for that. Um, every ooh, gotcha. Sorry. One more here. Not a great multitasker, so bear with me here. Everything on our website is $99 and up is free shipping. Um, typically don't ever run out of stock of fletching jigs, typically or veins or anything like that. So it should be able to get you what you need relatively quick. One more vein on this guy. Spread it around a bit. There you go. Keep it down. Oop, crud. Gotta be careful. That's why you hold on to the arrow when you push it on or it slides off. So, okay. That's your right heel, that's your straight, and that's your left. Voila. It's a three fletched arrow out of bits. Real simple. And 
careful pulling that off. Pull it out here. And that is your right helical fletched out of the Vein Master Pro, which that's a lot of helical. That's almost as much as you'll get on a true helical jig. So if you want an adjustable, this does more than this will, but it's uh, it does take more time. Um, but there is adjustability. I mean, you can do a right, you can do a left, you can do a straight, and it's all built into it. So um, we will do another video here in the near future of how to build a perfect set of arrows, um, match grade, etc. how to make them actually weigh the same things to do to get a higher level of performance out of your arrow. But like I said, head on over to the website, check out whatever you need here. We should have links in the bottom. Feel free to comment, like, and subscribe, please. We're almost to 5,000 viewers. It's pretty fast to get into that for us. Uh, we're pretty excited about it and hope to get more out to you every day. Um, message me, contact me with any of your questions, and thanks for checking out our channel. I appreciate it. We'll bring more content quickly.